Non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, are an exciting but extremely misunderstood technology that I believe are going to have a lot of people in trouble, scammed, or losing money. There is a ton of money being spent on them, but whether you are a buyer or a seller, there's a lot you should know that nobody is talking about. I'm going to cover a little about what NFTs actually are, and most importantly, what they are not. I'm going to discuss copyright laws with NFTs, how some NFT scams work, and how economically the NFT craze has elements that resemble a pyramid scheme, at least to me. A disclaimer though, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not even an absolute expert on NFTs. This video is for informational and educational purposes only. Non-fungible tokens are digital assets created normally on a decentralized blockchain. Decentralized blockchains are databases that are dispersed among many operating computers, so no single individual controls the records that are stored on them. There are lots of blockchains, and they're not all decentralized. They each have different rules and processes for how transactions are verified and how the blockchain is governed. Actually, anyone can create a blockchain if they know how to do it. Many are created by copying the base code of one blockchain and then customizing it. But of course, some blockchains gain a lot more popularity and traction than others. Bitcoin is a blockchain, although it only creates fungible tokens, or tokens that can be interchanged. To understand fungibility, think of dollar bills. If I have a dollar bill, and you have a dollar bill, we can swap dollar bills, and they have the exact same value, and for all practical purposes are the same thing. They are fungible. The second most popular blockchain, at least by market capitalization, is Ethereum. Unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum allows for the creation of non-fungible tokens, or NFTs. These are unique tokens that are not interchangeable like Bitcoins are. Each one represents something different. But Ethereum is not the only blockchain that supports NFTs. There are countless others. Ownership of non-fungible tokens can be assigned to individual wallets and can then be sold or transferred between wallets. But they never truly exist outside of the blockchain they are created on. They are just a line of code. Wallets can belong to individuals like you and me, but the blockchain records won't have individual names recorded as owners. They have wallet addresses, which can be obtained for free and without any personal information. Nothing prohibits individuals from having more than one wallet. In fact, many people do. And it can be tricky to know who you're actually dealing with on the other side of a transaction based on a wallet address number. Now, most people associate NFTs with digital images or pieces of art, you know, like the Bored Ape Yacht Club collection. But assigning an NFT to a digital image, or assigning a digital image to an NFT depending on how you look at it, is only a tiny fraction of what the technology could be used for. In fact, if you only get one thing out of this video, I want you to separate the concept of non-fungible token, which is a digital code on a blockchain, from the images you associate with them. The token may point to or reference the image, but in almost all cases the image itself isn't even stored on the blockchain. It's on a server somewhere that you don't control. You can't touch an NFT. You can't see an NFT. If you look at a Bored Ape Yacht Club image, you're not seeing an NFT, you're seeing a digital image. The NFT is a piece of code recorded on a decentralized blockchain, which may have that image connected to it. And that digital code is what is unique. The image can be reproduced and is probably in fact all over the internet. If you own an NFT, you, and more precisely your wallet address, is the designated owner of a digital token, according to whichever digital database or blockchain that token was created on. By the way, if you're still watching, giving this video a like is a huge help and I really appreciate it. For NFT art, a big misconception is that the buyer somehow owns the image associated with the digital token. And that's how it's often pitched. You are the sole owner of the artwork. Well, even a little research into copyright law, and it doesn't take a lawyer to figure out that that's not the case. I think a comparison to traditional art will help in understanding this. An artist can sell a print to a customer. The customer owns that print. They don't necessarily own the image itself. The artist can then sell another print of the same artwork to another customer, and that customer will own that print. The two prints display the same art, but are not the exact same objects, and can therefore have different owners and even different values. The artist retains copyrights, that is the right to reproduce the art. In this situation, unless the artist explicitly transfers their copyright or gives a license to use their work, they keep it. Licenses are formal, usually conditional uses of someone's work granted to another person and usually for a fee or a royalty. So if you buy an artist print, a copy of their art, that does not give you the right to reproduce that art or put it on a t-shirt or really do anything with it. You own a single print or copy of that artwork. NFTs, while new to most of the world, have zero legal impact on how copyrights work, at least for now. The best comparison I can find legally to the transfer of a piece of art using NFTs is that of an artist selling a print. But often NFTs are part of a collection, like the Bored Apes. 
Collectibles can have value, right? Well, yes, they certainly can. If I control certain images and brand those images in limited quantities of collectibles, the copies of those images I sell may have value for all sorts of reasons. Think about trading cards. A Babe Ruth rookie baseball card has a lot of value if its origin can be established as valid. Because of how baseball cards are created in limited quantities and because there are people who want to own them for whatever reason. But if I own the Babe Ruth baseball card, I can't make copies of it and have them be valuable. I don't own the image. I don't own anything but a piece of card stock that some people may wish to pay money for. At least a baseball card you can physically touch. NFTs don't change copyright laws, period. And the scarcity of them is questionable. Beeple made a lot of news when he sold his entire collection of everydays for a ridiculous amount of money. He sold an NFT pointing to a very large JPEG with 5,000 of his everydays displayed in a collage. But those images are on display all over his website and all over the internet. He sells prints of those images. He didn't give up or transfer the copyright of those images. And let's say you bought that Beeple image for millions of dollars. Wouldn't it piss you off if Beeple minted another one of the exact same image and sold it to someone else? Perhaps for much less than you paid? Well, you might say he can't do that. It was sold as a quote, one of one. He can in fact do that and there's nothing stopping him. I'm pretty sure people won't do that. It would destroy his reputation. But I can't speak for the millions of other people selling quote one of one NFTs. There's practically nothing proprietary about what you're buying with an NFT. It doesn't mean there's no reason at all to buy one, but understand what you're buying or selling and what you're not. Let's look at the flip side of copyrights and NFTs. What if you're an artist and somebody takes an image of your art and sells it as an NFT? Can they do that? No, not legally under pretty much any copyright law in existence. But you would have a problem. What are you going to do about it? What's the buyer who finds out he or she got scammed going to do about it? There's little anyone can do. There is no such thing as international copyright law. And yes, everything I'm referencing refers to United States copyright law. Most countries recognize other countries' copyrights, and most have laws of their own. But the internet transcends borders, and there's a decent chance that the creator of a counterfeit is from a third world country, or a country that has no interest in going after the scammer. That is, if you can even figure out where in the world they are, and whose jurisdiction it would be. And blockchains can be of little help. They work off of computer code that no individual has control over. That's the whole point of them, really. There's no customer service department to complain to. So what other kind of NFT scams should you be on the lookout for? Lots of them. But here's some that I've actually seen or I've met people who've experienced. For sellers of NFTs, a popular one is reaching out to a seller and proposing to be a marketing agency or manager who will sell your NFT for a commission. Well, often they require their payment up front and you never get anything out of it. Worse could be that they trick you into giving them the private key to your wallet. Never do that. Or someone could contact you and say they really love your NFT and have tons of cryptocurrency in a wallet somewhere but they need X number of dollars to pay the gas fees. Just transfer the money to them and they'll transfer the huge amount of cryptocurrency. Yeah, right. I've seen sellers get fake emails saying that their NFT has sold on OpenSea or whichever platform they're using. They just need to pay the gas fee. Unfortunately, I know this has worked far too many times. The excited seller eagerly transfers a couple hundred dollars. They think it's paying for a gas fee. It's not and they've been scammed. A lot of suspicions of money laundering through NFTs exist and it's almost certainly happening. But what should be more concerning to an NFT buyer is wash trading. Often buyers base the current value of an NFT based on what it or similar NFTs, perhaps from the same collection, have sold for recently. If you see that an NFT previously sold for $2,000 and all the others in that collection are selling for $2,000 or more, and you have an opportunity to buy it for just $1,500, that could seem like a real steal. Well, it probably is a steal, but it's the seller stealing your hard-earned money. Wash trading is when someone essentially sells the NFT to themselves so that it records a transaction at a certain value. With NFTs, it's easy to create two or more wallets and transfer the NFT between them a few times at increasing values. To a potential buyer, it'll look like the value of this NFT just keeps going up, up, and away. But in fact, it has no value and someone just tricked you into thinking it does. Wash trading is generally illegal in the United States and authorities watch out for it with securities and real estate. But NFTs are pretty much unregulated, and the wallets are fairly anonymous. Sometimes a collection is released and you see that, oh my god, it sold out in 20 minutes. Well, it could easily have sold out to a number of bots controlled by the seller, buying them up to inflate the value. It does happen, and the website Chainalysis just released a report confirming that it does. Although, it's probably very hard to know to what extent it's happening. I bet it's more than most people think. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. 
The craziness in the unregulated NFT market has a lot of elements that look to me like a pyramid scheme. Early adopters make a bunch of money that pours in during the excitement, but more and more money is required to keep the thing going. And eventually you run out of people wanting to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a cartoon ape. The scammers take their money and run, while you're left with a line of code that is worth nothing. What is exciting about NFTs is the technology and potential uses beyond silly doodles. They could serve as a way to secure ownership of things like concert and travel tickets, game assets, and even serve as deeds to things in the real world, maybe like real estate. It could cut out expensive middlemen in online transactions someday. I think it's still a ways off, and I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed and lose money at some point. My name is Brandon, and I've moved all my NFT content to this channel. 